Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to this talk of Big Butterfly Month on migration of South Indian butterflies. And who better to tell us about the migration of South Indian butterflies than the person who was responsible for starting the WhatsApp group and following the butterflies and tracking this migratory pattern in South India, Dr. Kalesh Sadasivan. So, Kalesh is an uh, entomologist who has been, I mean, uh, been in love with insects for quite a long time. He used to love ants and from ants he shifted over to butterflies. <laughs> Not that he doesn't love uh, ants any less, but he loves to track butterflies more. Uh, and a couple of days ago, we had a talk on the migration of monarch butterflies. And we are all aware of my monarchs being one of the one of the insects that has got a long, long migration. But we are not very aware of the migration that happens in India for butterflies. There has been a question in a lot of sessions in this big butterfly month which says, please tell us something about butterfly migration. Do butterflies migrate? Do they locally migrate? Do they migrate all over the country? Why do they migrate? How do they migrate? When do they migrate? Hope to answer, get answers of some of these queries today. Uh, I would request all of you to kindly switch off your microphone and your videos and keep them switched off. You can put in all your questions in the chat box. We will take up the questions at the end of the session. People watching in Facebook can uh, put in the questions in the comment section. We will also take up this question. Over to you, Dr. Kalish. Thank you, Shapano. So, <clears throat> as you said, uh, this butterfly migration has uh, fascinated me since some time. And uh, it was only very recently that uh, we got into the tracking part. So this was aided by uh, the WhatsApp group, which we started. And we have uh, members from uh, mostly all states from Southern India. And we, where they use this uh, to track the routes. So I'll be explaining uh, very briefly uh, about butterfly migration. It will be a, a, just a primer to people who want to know more about butterflies, how they migrate, what causes this migration, and how to be a part of citizen science that contributes to this data generation. So it'll be a very, very brief session, maybe 30, 35 slides, and uh, any queries you can uh, ask or after the session, or maybe you can just uh, send it to me on WhatsApp or email or on the forum as mentioned. So shall we start? Yes, doctor. So, are you able to see the screen? Not yet, doctor. Okay. Can you see? Yes, uh, can you make it full screen, please? Yeah, I'll make it the slide more. It's fine? Yes, it's perfect. <clears throat> okay, so we'll start, right? Yes. Okay, so the, the, so the, the purview of this talk is basically butterfly migration and that in southern India. Okay, so I basically represent the research organization called TNHS. It's an NGO based in Trivandrum, Kerala. So we have been in this field since maybe 20 years, but then we got registered in 2010 and we have members from different walks of the society who work on different uh, parts of natural history. Some like ants, some work on butterflies, some uh, are just basically photographers, some just track. <clears throat> and there are a lot of people who even uh, work on marine organisms. So it's a very interesting group. So we have this uh, teenager Lepidoptera research group, which are uh, <clears throat> basically uh, consists of five or six members who are very strong in this butterfly uh, research. And uh, this uh, WhatsApp group is basically an outgrowth of the uh, concept of butterfly monitoring, uh, especially in case of migration. So, so what is migration? <clears throat> basically, uh, migration is the process where a large group of animals or organisms travel to a different place. And generally it is to escape unfavorable environmental conditions like heavy rains or drought or maybe extensive temperature. But there is a, 
slight controversy regarding the term migration and dispersal and uh, usage of the terms. But then generally we consider this uh, as long range insect movements. Uh, some ecologists delineate migration rather very narrowly, like a, as a round trip, a round move that we can uh, regular between breeding and non breeding grounds. For example, if you see waders and the warblers in case of birds. But in insects, we cannot actually consider like that because most of them are dispersing and uh, only the subsequent generations come back to the original uh, place where the migration started. So it is not a close circuit journey because most of the insects don't complete it anymore. Here, we restrict the discussion to migration of large insects like butterflies. <laughs> which are seasonal and which involves journeys of hundred, hundreds of kilometers in southern part of India, or we can call it southern India or peninsular India. Peninsular India is much a broader term, but we'll restrict ourselves to mostly southern India, the four states in southern India. So coming to butterfly migration, see there is an, another term called dispersal. And uh, we should be understanding the basic difference between migration and dispersal, though some people use them interchangeably, some say dispersal is the period of migration. But then in this context, in migration, we refer to a seasonally predictable movement of large number of butterflies or long distances, generally from one breeding ground to the another. Uh, the females of these butterflies, they undergo reproductive diapause, making the abdomen lighter so that they can travel faster and efficiently. It is gen genetically determined and triggered by environmental cues. While in dispersal, this happens over relatively short distances. They are uh, usually a part of the normal behavior. Here the abdomen, uh, uh, the female, invests much uh, in the abdomen for reproductive purposes. This is an unpredictable movement. So it could be an exodus in uh, seen as a normal behavior or as a secondary to factors like population explosion or in loss of travel host. Coming to congregation, these are short terms which we need to know before we go into the details. So congregations are basically butterfly roots. They are akin to uh, these uh, hibernations that take place in Morass in, uh, in the Americas. They initially they aggregate in very small numbers when the winter sets in. And this gradually expands into huge congregations or roots. This function, as mentioned earlier, similar to the hibernation phenomenon. And this is where they wait. They wait for the environmental cues like uh, rains or change in the climate to move out to a destination. So this this may be permanent roots. For example, we have permanent roots in uh, our Lombard Life Sanctuary. We can see them in Karanthi region of uh, Vaina and lots of other places. And usually these congregations are restricted to the western slopes of the western guards. And there are a few congregations uh, reported on the eastern guards as well. But generally, we don't see congregations on the eastern slopes or the rain shadows zones of western guards. And uh, there has been very little studies on congregations and how they aggregate or they, how they congregate when they move, what are the environmental cues and all this. But these are very interesting things to study in future. So now coming to uh, what are the cues and sensors which determine migration. It's basically uh, in their genes and is triggered by the environment, like heavy rainfall, humidity, extremes of temperature, loss of host plant abundance, and generally population explosion, which usually triggers an exodus. And how do they migrate? See, basically the researchers have found that there are two systems. One is called the time compensated sun compass. The other is called the inclination based magnetic compass. The details of this can, you can find it in the reference I've stated. It's a very detailed research. You can go into the details, very, very interesting research. The daylight cues such as the sun or the polarized light, the butterfly can sense through the eyes and there are annual sensors, annual clocks and all this stuff. They get integrated in the neuro, neural circuits and then they determine. And there's another called the uh, inclination based magnetic compass, where the light dependent inclination of magnetic compass for orientation is done. This is uh, useful in, in, even in the dark. <clears throat> what is the evolution of a magnetic phenomenon? See, basically, uh, when you see the rainfall in the Western Guards, there is torrent shell. So this uh, this kind of change in the climate may not be congenial for the butterflies to stay or reproduce. So the torrential southwestern monsoon rains and associated foggy climate for extended periods in the western guards and the coastal strip are unfavorable. Secondly, the thermal conditions, lower temperatures are that, that are not favorable for adults for butterflies uh, during the monsoon to stay here. And mostly these butterflies, they lack a diapause, that is the uh, suspended animation phase in the early six, for example, some eggs, caterpillars or pupae, may lie dormant for 
many months to try it over the adverse climatic conditions. But there is uh, an apparent uh, issue in this statement because uh, in, on personal observations, we have found that uh, some butterflies like the crimson rose or, and the common rose, they can undergo bypass for many months, many months. So what I guess is from uh, information we gather on the group, uh, it is not only the congregations that generate <coughs> the migratory exodus, it's also the emergence of butterflies that, take a, that come out from the biopausal stage, especially in the pupil stage. This has also been mentioned in uh, historical works like Aitken in Bombay, where he has noticed the same with emigrants. So this is a place where we, we can do a lot of research. <coughs> so this is a video by uh, Vinod Sadashyam showing uh, <coughs> a congregation in Western Ghats. See, they slowly aggregate and then they go for the bigger use. Why should we study migration? See, the answer is as same as why sh should you study butterflies. These are just indicator species. As you know, indicator species, they reflect the health of the environment and they're susceptible to even the minute changes in the climate. And we all know that migration is triggered by sustained rainfall. And a temperature of at least 25 degrees Celsius is needed for any butterfly activity, generally. So any environmental change or climate change will adversely affect this. So why should we study this? See, basically it is like we get a lead time. We get a lead time to sense the issue and address it before it affects us or the higher fauna like humans. So it's just basically for our selfishness to for survival that we need to study them, at least for that. How do we monitor migration? See, when we uh, talk about migration, people think that it's a very complicated stuff. We cannot contribute, but it's very simple. See, uh, when the, when the, whenever there is a migratory stream, you stand on one side of the stream, may take a cross section of some 50 meters, and then you count the number of butterflies passing per minute, per species, and then you multiply it with the duration of migration as well as the extent of migration. You will get an approximate number. And the approximate numbers in Nilgiris will actually leave you dazzled because uh, it runs into hundreds of millions. That is the enormity of migration we see in South India. So coming to the migratory cycle. Basically butterflies, the life cycle of these butter migratory butterflies go through four phases. The first is the onward migratory phase where the butterflies are in reproductive diapause. They don't breed, they just go to the breeding grounds on the other side, <coughs> for example, the eastern guards. <coughs> then there is a post-migratory swarm and a reproductive activity, see when the destination, they reproduce, they go about, and then when the climate changes, there is a post-reproductive congregation where they ag aggregate and become large congregations waiting for the NML cues, and they go into reproductive diapause. As soon as the rains reach the eastern guards, they, return, they start the return migration, and come to Australia. This is the basic four phases of a migratory species. So uh, as explained, we already had a class on more migrations, so I did not actually explain to you. The other no migrations are the painted lady migrations happening in Eurasia and Africa to the tropical parts of Asia and Africa. And there are migrations of the long tail blue in Europe and there are migrations in Australasia. These are all interesting uh, migrations that have been very well known. But sadly, the Indian scenario is not much known compared to this. But it is not less strange and surprising uh, compared to this. The earlier studies of migration was basically done by British naturalists as uh, in all the fields. So this is, a, this is an example of a migration of the painted lady. Uh, you see that they migrate and uh, they go to the extremes. They, they from the temperate zone, they come to the uh, tropics and they go back. This is an interesting case of migration where a butterfly flies into the rains. There are two major regions in India where migration needs to be studied. One is in the Himalayas, the other is in the peninsula of India. In Himalayas, there has been an interesting paper, uh, a review by Williams, where he said that more than 30 species have been thought to be migrating. And in, the, in this mountain range, it is generally altitudinal in nature, where the butterflies migrate from low elevation to high elevation and high to low, depending upon the seasons. Uh, not much studies are available uh, from the recent times, and this has a great implication on climate change. So alternate distribution of butterflies, how they travel, what elevation they are found, this is very important. There are a few studies, but then we need to have a detailed study on this alternate uh, distribution. And there is definitely a role for citizen science in this field. 
some common species that are mentioned to be in the, in the in literature to be migrating are the pea blue so the common are the mottled emigrants faded lady tortoise shells spot puffins cabbage whites or oak leaf sailors tree browns and the pansies coming to migration in peninsula of india here basically the migration happens to be longitudinal or they travel from east to west or west to east but there is a latitudinal component as as we see they also travel from south to north and north to south and also there is an elevation component where they travel from down the ghats down to the coastal regions according to uh, our estimate there are at least 25 species which are migrants at least 25 species and the major migrants seen here are the dark blue tiger the common indian crow the double branded crow the blue tiger the common emigrant and the common albatross coming to the historical background of migration in south india the first record of uh, migration from india was by moore in 1830 but not much details are available after that then comes the time of uh, aitken where he has described migration happening that like in maharashtra in uh, bnhs so if you search bnhs for migration there are a lot of papers by foreigners by britishers where they have uh, mentioned the details of migration what they think about it they also mentions about uh, the migration of painted lady according to aitken he says it arrives in june in large numbers and breeds locally on plumia this is something which we need to uh, see because uh, i don't think anybody has recently seen them breeding on this species and it's a very common species around and then we have evershed who was in the meteorological station colonies uh, and he was on the migratory path of butterflies and he has done papers in nature and he also mentioned by williams in his uh, review in 1938-39 and then there's an interesting phenomenon of butterflies migrating through sea for example crimson rose so that has been recorded by ormson i mean most of, many many works uh, especially people go, who go into uh, pelagic birding they have seen butterflies out at sea maybe 20 km 15 km they have even seen uh, your uh, common evening rounds as per ja- jafar palo he has seen them at sea settling on rocks and then uh, there is a migration report by french in kola the westward migration of tigers and crows and the interesting part and the good highlight is about the work done by larsen so he has uh, given a, a good record of what he has done observed in 1954 to 58 in the nilgiris where he was stationed and he gives the spring migration the autumn migration also mentions how and what species migrate and there is also an interesting uh, thing he has mentioned he says uh, to check the orange of butterflies he used to catch these butterflies and put them in a, a small jar <clears throat> and release them in the morning but without fail they used to follow the last day's path so very interesting observation by larsen come to the types of migration in south india so we can classify them <clears throat> in different ways one is the alternate migration so this is the well known migration we see uh, in common albatross which has an alternate component see these are not independent terms they are all mutually complementary and uh, they also run with each other so there is an alternate component migration and we can call them alternate migrants for example the common albatross they migrate along the ghats along the streams in winter and breed in the plains and ascend before the monsoon you can see them <clears throat> especially in poor landscape in uh, aralam aralam land, uh, landscape is the best place to see there are also similar reports from uh, nilgiris similar reports from andamanes and agastamanes <clears throat> and then there is a latitudinal migration where they migrate from north south for example the crimson cross migration which happens from the pen- peninsular india to sri lanka then there is a longitudinal component where, they, where there is an east west migration this is the common migration which you observe in tigers crows and emigrants then as i explained earlier there is into the rain migration where the painted lady from the temperate zone migrates into the rain to to reach the <coughs> monsoonal regions in the tropics and then away from the monsoon like away from the monsoonal rain migration seen in tigers and crows and especially emigrants and there are uh, the way we classify them <coughs> depending upon the regions you can call them local migrant regional migrant national migrant or international migrant transferal migrations so local migration may, may be confused with dispersal but then there is a component of breeding uh especially in some butterflies like arnetta or taracos that is your uh, <coughs> uh, forest hoppers and uh, tamil grass stars they do this on elevation basis they breed on the high elevations they come down to the low elevation then they breed here then ascend depending upon the season so that's also a migratory phenomenon uh, then there's regional migration all the common migrants which you see they follow regional migration international migration we can call crimson rose across the park state in sri lanka as an international migration <coughs> then there's a transferal migration as i explained earlier by painted lady coming to the monsoons and migration basically 
it's the monsoons that trigger the migration and sustain it. So this annual event is triggered by the pre-monsoon showers. So all the butterflies which are waiting in the congregations, the butterflies which are waiting in the people diapos, they get triggered by the pre strong pre-monsoon showers. And then <coughs> the event, it is catalyzed by the strength of monsoons. <coughs> As the rains establish themselves strongly, the rate of migration also increases, but then there's a negative uh, correlation as well. As the rains are heavy, migration might cease. The winds also help them in movement, the wind currents. They actually ride the wind currents. And the basic thing about South Indian migration is that the onward migration, onward means the migration of Western Ghats to the Eastern Ghats is based on the Southwest monsoons and the return migration is based on the Northeast monsoons. You can see in the figure, the Southwest monsoons, they, the arrows point towards the, uh, the way they ascend and the other picture shows the Northeast monsoon where they descend from, the ascent, I mean, descend from Northeastern region and see, you can see that the, the mode of the butterflies are exactly parallel to it. So that is the basic figure. From the onward migration, it starts in April, May. And may extend into June and July as well, depending upon the rate of rains. It happens from the Western Ghats to the Eastern Plains and the Eastern Ghats. The migrant butterflies, after reaching, so from the previous migration, the butterflies, they wait here. And then they follow the pre monsoon showers and they close up for the migration. In 2019, for example, in the April first week, there was no rains. And the congregation of crows, we were continually observing and they were still there. By the second week, the rains began and the migration started. So it started with the immigrants, those are the jolly fellows. They start first generally and then followed by the blue tigers, dark blue tigers, lion, albatrosses, plain tigers, and assailants. They fly towards the eastern bars. In some places, because the rains are not heavy, depending upon uh, the uh, landscape region, there might be difference in the rains. And in those places, some of the congregation were still waiting. By 30th April, by one month, the migration had reached the Eastern Ghats. So by four weeks, they had actually covered uh, a journey of maybe 500 kilometers. The return migration, that happens during August, September, October, or sometimes it, depending on the uh, type of rains, and generally it also extends to November, December as well, generally. And this can change, this can change according to when the Northeast monsoons come, or it also depends upon the uh, and, and the weather phenomena taking place in the Bay of Bengal. As observed this year, uh, there was an early rain and the migration was early. In 2019, uh, it started around the 20th August. So, in some ways, it can be early, as I said, uh, they kickstart with some uh, meteorological events like cyclones or heavier rains, they can kickstart the return. So, now to the species <clears throat> that uh, usually migrate in southern India. The family Papillonidae or the <coughs> solo tail butterflies. The commonest uh, which we observe are the crimson rose, <coughs> the lion butterflies, uh, the common mormon, and the spot spot tail. Very common butterflies, you are probably well known with this. And then come to the Pieridae. These are the common immigrants, the mortal immigrants, then the your albatrosses, the common albatross and the lesser albatross. <coughs> so people have confuse the lesser albatross with the common albatross for many years or many decades. Now we have an interesting clue to determine which species is what. These are also joined by a great orange tip, Salmaros and other butterflies like Phineas. Now come to the Nymphalidae, which are the major groups that migrate, the, the, the common crow and the double pointed crow. Interestingly, the double pointed crows are very rare on the western slots of western birds. You can see the brands here. Or the double, double branch of the double branch of the crow and the semi branch of the common crow. Now, the tigers and leopards, see the common leopard, they are an important component in the return migrations. And there is a, also a phenomena called reverse migration. You should not confuse the term return migration, reverse migration. The reverse migration happens in local regions where the normal stream goes against the vector of migration. It is a transient phenomena. Again, when the climate changes, they go to the normal vector of migration. So we have the dark blue tiger who's, this is the hindwing cell and you can see the dark patch inside the cell which means dark blue tiger. You can see the blue tiger, the patch is not so big, so it's the blue tiger. So you just see the cell and you can identify the species. This is the dark, this is the dark blue tiger.
This is the dark blue tiger and this is the blue tiger. Just see the cell and you can identify the species. And then we have the plain tiger and the striped tiger. The egg flies and pansies, the great egg fly, the dinad egg fly, the lemon pansies, and the chocolate pansy, pico pansy, and all the pansies, they are seen as a major component of the return migration. Lysinia that migrate. The common species that we see in South India that migrate are the pea blue and the dark cerulean. Uh, pea blues, you can see them in a large numbers, even the coastal regions. Generally, they are still themselves the high elevations, but during migration, they come to the plains. And then there's a dark cerulean. Uh, this is uh, seen very close to the gaps. So to observe this, you should go to a really uh, wetter wind forest. You'll see the dark cerulean. For example, if we go to Nilambu, we go to uh, the Adamalar Valley, you can see dark cerulean's migrating. Hesperidae. People uh, have reported Hesperidae to be migrating. I have personal observation of uh, huge numbers of small brown red swift migrating across Bhavani, upper Bhavani in Nilgiris. The small brown red swift, brown owl and common brown owl, these are the three common species that migrate. And common brown owl is known for even uh, local exodus. When the horse plants run out, they just go out and disperse themselves. Come to the migration clusters in South India. So if you classify migration based on the zone, I mean, uh, based on the landscape regions, we have the Agastamales cluster in the south, followed with the Anamales, then the Wayanad core cluster, and then Deccan Plateau, which runs to Narmada Tapti Valley. So we have four clusters, and we are basically concerned with the last three. And the Deccan one is also important because the people in uh, Bangalore and Mysore, they are yours in the Deccan cluster. Generally, they cover a distance of 350 to 500 kilometers from Western Ghats to the Eastern Ghats. And it is interesting to note that the return is not by the same butterfly, it is the progeny, that is a second generation migration. And the rate is generally, depending upon the climate and the landscape, the rate is generally 10 to 50 kilometers per hour. And it reaches the opposite side in one to three weeks with bosses at congregations and small aggregations. The maximum distance covered in the plains comes to about 100 kilometers per day. And in the guards, depending upon the terrain, 20 to 30 kilometers per day. If you see the uh, diurnal change, the migration usually picks up by uh, 9, 10, and then becomes a peak by 11, 11.30 and dies down by 12. As the sun goes really high, they just trickle down to few numbers and then by 3 p.m. they just pick up and then dies down by 4 p.m. This is basically because uh, but the butterflies, they need <clears throat> a particular temperature to keep the activity going and generally it is around order of 25 degrees Celsius. And as I mentioned earlier, in the Nilgiri stretch alone, <clears throat> see the Vainat Kuru Nilgiri stretch, <clears throat> there alone, the sheer numbers go around, goes around 100 million as per Larson. <clears throat> so to summarize, the volume migration in India is considerable and uh, this is an interesting revelation because most of us, uh, we don't actually get an idea how much species, how much specimens are involved in these migrations. Migration is a regular annual event, though the volume and species conversion may vary. And it is also interesting to note that the onward and return migrations are not complement. The, the number of species, <clears throat> the amount of species, and the rate of migration, everything is differ, differing from the uh, in both these sessions. The timing of month, uh, migration is closely linked to the onset of months, especially the uh, heaviness of the pre months and showers. So that is why uh, people say that if you see butterflies migrating in huge numbers, this time the rains are going to be really heavy and it's re really nice for farmers, as I've heard from SRK in uh, a farmer in Rajpana. So there are permanent migration paths. See, uh, during the monitoring, during the last four or five years, we have found that there are permanent migration paths that are used <coughs> year by year. There are, uh, if you establish nodal observation points along these paths, we can help and monitor this migration better. And there seems to be a link between certain other phenomena with migration, for example, <coughs> uh, mud puddling, then uh, aggregation on uh, plants which have alkaloids, and then there's also a link with uh, your mimicry. So all this stuff are not probably studied or may not, not, maybe not studied in detail. This all lends to uh, or gives an idea what all things we need to know about this interesting phenomena. <coughs> So in six, 2016, we started this uh, Migration India WhatsApp group. It was started by TNHS and associated with, associated with our close associates like TNBS, BBC, ROAR, Rajavalayam, firms, and numerous other volunteers across Peninsular India. So we have volunteers uh, in major cities and the geographical regions. The basic concept was uh, real-time tracking based on observers in field. So now we have around 220, uh, 220 members in the group and we cover the major areas. The members update the group on a regular format about butterfly migration. 
the direction of the less possible location is suggested on that format and the next observer continues this process just like you have this pattern being changed so we will have a real time tracking of butterflies how they move from what direction they move where they go and what are the fine geographical things we have to observe uh, this thing is analyzed based on uh, the relation to the rainfall and the weather parameters and uh, we are also planning to have a migration app so this is how the uh, group looks so we have given this uh, migration india a small message where the people can where the members can see what all message they should type the format is like uh, you have to enter the location the direction the species and number of butterflies flying per minute name of the observer time observation the next place to follow this is the most critical part then this is an example of how an observer has recorded a migration she has said possible place to follow up is south kodo so people in kodo can follow up from there this is how the map is being shared using google maps or uh, I, uh, apple maps or whatever is available this is an example of uh, data generated on the group this was uh, this uh, graphic was done by pavendran where he has uh, summarized the migration happening on 2nd may uh, this is another one by uh, hari who has uh, done work on the eastern side in chennai and uh, how the uh, directions are shared so some uh, interesting videos that come on the whatsapp group i'll play for you the first one we can see see how subtle these things are so only a careful observer can uh, delineate a uh, regular movement from a direction movement see the direction movement you can see these are the tigers migrating and the course so the, the directional component is the critical part in diagnosing migration sometimes the movement might be very small in number and only a seasoned observer can find it out this is how migration happens and in certain places where there is a valley there is something called a bundling effect where all the migration paths they converge in one place where you can see extensively large number of butterflies which can't escape even the non seasoned observer so that is called the funneling effect the next video you can see immigrants migrating see the different direction they migrate to cities towns under bridges through shopping malls everywhere and the last is an interesting video if you see that is the sea coast this is the crimson rose migrating south towards sri lanka so people who go for winter birding or migration watch for raiders you can see that happening all the coast all around kerala coast karnataka coast and tamil nadu so this is a video showing the congregation activity butterflies flying around finally they get stacked like this the whole tree will be full of butterflies then they'll just wait there for the animal cues to move out there are no much studies about congregations are they used yearly what are the microclimatics uh, components of this rose and all this stuff so this is an interesting phenomena to be studied how can we contribute so basically uh, the citizens and initiative runs along the whatsapp group for the time being so you can uh, send us a message if you want to continue to get into the group we'll put you in the group and you can contribute uh, by uh, reporting the migration phenomena you observe so uh, this is the end of the presentation and i would like to thank members of tnhs swanram mr pavendran uh, vinod sadashivam and prakash hari from tnbs Ashok Sen Gupta and Hanish and Firoz from BBC, SRK and Sharan from Roar, Manoj and Ramesh Vira from WBS, Vinay and Firoz and Samuel. And uh, special thanks to the Barsa uh, Butterfly Group who have uh, allowed me to use the uh, various uh, multimedia photographs and uh, the videographs.
thank you thank you kalid for the wonderful presentation uh the 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 phenomenon of migration has been mystical and people have been wondering about it all throughout especially in place like india where it's much less observed and studied but uh, you would definitely agree with me that we are seeing the green shoots of studies about the migrations we are at least getting to know what migrates and where at least in some places we will take the questions but you will also understand from the questions that people are now interested to study migrations at their local level and want your help to kind of guide them on how we're going to do it so right now not wasting any much time can we uh, is it okay if we take on a couple of questions from the chat box sure sir chat box okay um i'll i'll read them out sir oh okay okay <clears throat> a question comes in from uh, facebook it says not much is known about butterfly migration in india if we want to start a study how could we go about it and how do we find out which butterflies are migrating in our area so as a starter i would suggest joining one of the whatsapp groups or facebook groups on migration where you can get primed about the species and the uh, rates and the way they migrate and then gradually you will get accustomed to it and then you can uh, interact with us we can tell you uh, which are the areas which we need to research on and you can probably contribute to it that be the best option i, I should i think you should get, get into the group and then uh, uh, you can interact with people and get an understanding because uh, not much is known see there is no publications uh, maybe there are hardly 10 20 papers on migration butterflies and lot of stuff to be still known see uh, most of the uh, when we study migration it's more than uh, more than answers what we get is more more questions and which we need to uh, really answer and people should get into the research especially on uh, butterfly migration and we can help no issues Uh, next question from uh, Suravi Balaji. She asks: uh, uh, So, do the butterflies start during the entire migration period, or do they get food source during their journey? They do occasionally stop for refueling. They stop for uh, mud puddling. They stop for nectar feeding. But uh, generally, they do what they do is just migrate, migrate, and migrate from one uh, aggregation to another aggregation. They do refuel. They do refuel occasionally. But what happens is they have generally stored their energy uh, before the congregation happening, uh, probably in the form of fat, which they can use to uh, as a fuel during migration. But then there are some uh, individuals who actually go in for nectaring. And if you see the first sign of migration, uh, the overt sign of migration is butterflies uh, aggregating around crotal area uh, weeds uh, along your uh, butterfly garden, some other places. So they do refuel along the route. Some of them. Okay. Uh, just a question from me. Uh -huh. If you say the butterflies store fat, don't they become heavier, and that makes it difficult for them to fly for long distances? Yes, 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 yes. So th there should there should be a compromise on how much you can store and how much you can refill on the way. So that's why I said both of them happens. Okay. A uh, question, Doctor Abdul Hamid, as we this normally migration uh, causes casualties due to fatigue, exhaustion, predation, environmental hazard, and other stresses. So, did you notice such casualties during their migration? Yes, actually, <clears throat> most of the casualties are on the road, uh, road kills. Secondly, uh, they get actually some of them get stranded in water. That happens sometimes, especially during migration through the uh, sea. And the third thing is predation. All this happens. The so mostly it is man-made, and uh, usually you see thousands of butterflies killed on road. If you go to Palghar, if you go to Nilgiris, if you go to Palnis, you will see them as road kills. A lot of them. a uh, question from akshay how to become a volunteer for butterfly migration join the whatsapp group or facebook group you will automatically become one of our member and you can contribute it's easy can i uh, doctor can i get that screen on at uh, the background where you sure. have your details sure 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 definitely should i or i yes, I'll, I'll, i'll do that so that people can note down yeah So this is my whatsapp number you can even search on facebook uh, there's a migration india whatsapp uh, facebook group in whatsapp you can just send me a message i'll put you on the group i guess we need to uh, break the group or else we need to start another one because it's only 220 members or maybe we'll have to see what some members who are not active on it okay 
Sambhava Jain asks, any work in creating butterfly migration corridors in urban areas like plantation of LHPs and nectaring plants on pavements and green belts instead of ornamentals and any study currently ongoing and how and where to volunteer to study for this? Uh, regarding the second part, as I told, we can join the WhatsApp group. Uh, regarding the first part, there are no such corridors available. Uh, and then there are only some, uh, see, if you see uh, the migration path, they can adjust themselves uh, depending upon the change. But sometimes they, they can't. If you go to Wayanad, you'll see them uh, passing under uh, shopping malls, inside the shopping malls. The route was, the shopping mall is on the path and they are migrating through it. So sometimes you can't escape, but then uh, there's a concept called uh, urban biodiversity preserves, uh, which is promoted by me. So basically it's like you have a particular place which is not being used for anything else. You can preserve it as such. For example, if it's a field or maybe a backyard of a temple or a church or even a cemetery, you maintain it like that. For the natural vegetation to come up, they will use it. They're just like islands. It's called urban biodiversity preserves. So you can do that. Second thing is you can establish uh, butterfly gardens or maybe you can go for a butterfly friendly gardening technique where you can plant all the ornamental and such which are particularly useful for butterflies and other creatures. Uh, but no studies have been done as of now. Okay. Lord Du Lindsay asked, how far can butterflies fly in a day? Generally, it depends upon the climate and the uh, terrain. In, the, in South India, what we observed is based on the uh, messages on the group, uh, in plains, in Tamil Nadu plains, they migrate around 100 kilometers per day, which is the maximum. And in the ghats, they move around 20 to 30 or maybe 50 kilometers per day. That is the maximum. The, the problem is, that since these are triggered by uh, this climate and the, uh, the activity is temperature dependent, only a particular band of temperature they can be active. So they have to pick up the temperature by 10, 10 30, they'll pick up, and then by 4, it dies up. So basically, maybe they'll get a, a duration of maybe 5 or 6 hours per day to migrate. That's what, uh, that's what determines the uh, rate of migration. Uh, this is probably from a resident in Chandigarh. <laughs> I have seen pictures of tiger congregations in Sukhna Lake, Chandigarh. How can we find out more about where do they come from and where do they go? So there are records of uh, butterflies migrating in North India and in the Himalayas as well. So maybe it's related to that. But unfortunately, we don't have much data on it. Probably he should be starting a WhatsApp group and uh, putting people from the Himalayas and Southern Himalayan region to monitor butterflies, just like we did in South India. He should volunteer. He is the change. He should be the change. Yes. Since since you are much experienced with this doctor, why don't we start off a group for all places in India, separate separate groups where you can guide them based on the knowledge that you already gathered. We can do that, but I'm not, I'm not really knowledgeable about the terrain in the Himalayas. I've just visited the place maybe five or six times, uh, but probably somebody who knows the terrain should start it. And uh, I can help Moishas. <laughs> yeah, because the synergy is what is going to count at the end of the day. The all over yes. India, what is the synergy happening for migration? That is going to count. Yes, definitely. And uh, in WhatsApp, as you know, the restriction is for the numbers. So we have to keep the numbers low. That is also a limiting factor. Uh, but then if you have a separate this thing, uh, a WhatsApp group for uh, Himalayas, or you can even collaborate that on Facebook. Or we have already a group called the Migration India group on Facebook where uh, any data on India can be collected. So probably we can use that, that platform. Yeah, Monarch Butterfly has got a number of apps in the US if you're aware. Yes, yes. So yes, that yes. can be replicated out here in India also in the app, app basis. Yes, that will yes. probably make more of the backend data. Yes, definitely we should do that. <laughs> Any Anirudh Behel asked, how long do the butterflies take to finish the migration journey to the destination? So in South India, they, the maximum, I guess, is around 500 kilometers. They take a week and a half, the shortest, to reach that place. I think, uh, how to monitor and record butterfly migration in a place, along with the change of seasons? Uh, basically, uh, what we are, uh, as I suggested, there is a method to monitor migration. So you should be uh, monitoring it on a regular basis, right? For for example, every day you can see. So maybe uh, once a week you can see. Or when there is a migration happening, uh, there's a way to document it. As I suggested, you can take a 50 meter cross section and uh, count the number of species and butterflies passing through that section. And then uh, repeat the same year yearly. You'll get a good data this. But then you have to collide with people on the other side. It's a long, uh, see basically, uh, I would say it is not an individual process. You have to have a big group to, to, to do this. Uh, what we planned initially was to have a drive and follow the migration, but that's not practical. 
So you need to have a big group of volunteers all spread along the geographical region to monitor it clearly. As an individual, we have uh, limitations. Jitendra Kumar asks, can you suggest some literature to study butterfly migration? Uh, the best would be to uh, just Google butterfly migration in India. The second option is to go to uh, the JBNHS, Bombay Natural Society, the journal. They have a huge collection of uh, articles from the British time. That is the base. And recently there are publications from NCBS, National Biology Sciences, by Dr. Kunta MP. These are the only sources we have in India. Uh. Kartik Sundar from Facebook. He has asked that I have been getting to know that there have been extensive studies uh, being down southern peninsular region. Are there any such studies conducted at all in North Plateau region and Northeast? Uh, actually, we don't have much data, but uh, it should be really forthcoming if somebody can volunteer and do that. At least a review of whatever has been done and what is happening, especially Himalayas and Northeast India. Okay. This is a nice interesting question by Prasun Prakash. Any studies on predatory birds migrating with butterflies or any predators waiting for butterflies to come in the route of migration? Uh, see, there is an interesting observation by uh, Evershed in the Balinese. He says the Batesan mimicry is a passport for migratory butterflies. So generally it is expected that the predatory birds won't touch those spe uh, species which are colored like uh, your uh, dangerous or maybe the protected ones. For example, if you see Danae egg fly, they are looking like your plain tigers. So probably they have the passport in them. And uh, the number of butterflies they get, but they are less. But then we need to have a serious scientific study on this. These are all casual observations. Uh, nothing is known. Generally nothing is known. It's a big lack of it. Madhu KS asks, do every specimen in a species participate in migration? Generally, uh, most of them migrate. There, there are resident populations as well. Uh, but then what percentage or proportion stays back, we, don't have, we have absolutely no idea. I think this is a question you addressed just now. Do birds follow the migration pattern of butterflies, like in the case of dragonflies where amur falcons and bee eaters follow them? Uh, we don't have such data as of now, but then we should actually discuss with somebody who knows more about bird migration as well. So do each generation complete one round journey or just one way? Like do they enter a breed in between? Uh, there are uh, two kinds of um, phenomena happening in South India. One is the uh, single generation migration. So what happens is one generation from Western Ghats, they go to the Eastern Ghats, they breed and die. The subsequent generation comes back. So it is a uh, two generation migration. And then the interesting phenomenon about crimson process is that we have not seen the return migration from Sri Lanka. It's probably one, one way dispersal. So both of things are, these things are happening. And people say that in case of the painted lady, it is a multiple generation migration in, on the return part. Uh, we don't have much data, that is the truth. But in South India, we have observed this. It is a two generation migration phenomenon, two generations. Subsequent generations come back. Great. Dr. Abdul Hamid asks once again any radio telemetric studies on butterfly migration in India? Uh, as far as I know, nothing. So that is, we are so much data deficient in migration. We yeah. have not done the studies right now. Yes. So this presentation is basically aimed at telling the lacuna, giving you the questions rather than the answers. <laughs> and showcasing <laughs> the pioneer of butterfly migration studies in India also. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say like that because people, uh, maybe uh, the great Britishers and all those people, naturalists in India, they have done much more. Uh, what we have done is just join together uh, and use the information technology as a tool to monitor it uh, <laughs> in our region. <laughs> okay, Priya Padangi wants to unmute and ask a question. Priya, can you please unmute yourself, please? Uh, thank you. Uh, sir, this is regarding the uh, protection of the migrating butterflies. Now, we know that uh, many of them get uh, killed in road kills and other things, especially uh, another incident I will also share with you what I found. Uh, is there some way we could, uh, you know, uh, start off, it's already not there, some way of protecting these uh, uh, butterflies also on their migration route. Some of them are also protected species by law, but it doesn't happen when, when they actually are flying over there. Yes. Uh, the, the other incident that I was talking about is uh, in the uh, sports grounds, you have these uh, nets for the cricket uh, practice, you know. Yeah. So uh, what I found in the in a ground, uh, this is in Bangalore, uh, in Jainagar, uh, near Madhavan Park, there's a stadium. 
so there i found that uh, during the migration time uh, these butterflies were getting into the nets okay and they are those long uh, nets no for the cricket practice yes, yes so yes. they go because the nets were in the same direction as their movement so blocked. when so both ways when they were going from this direction to that and on their return also both the times i found in the opposite nets they were getting caught and they were like continuously struggling to get out because they wouldn't fly backwards they were driven okay. to fly towards their yes. uh, direction right yes yes so yes. they were not able to get out of those nets so like if it come can come up with you know simple solutions or simple uh, uh, things to be followed if that is brought out on a higher level from the like i don't know whether it's a forest department or which is a department concerned where you know if they have such things they have to have a slight gap on the top or something like that you know so like how how people uh, really go gaga about uh, the migration of uh, your uh, monarch butterflies yeah. and they protected taken care of people on the way and things like that if we start bringing in more awareness of that it's not only studying them but also making sure they actually moving sometimes they get stopped by such uh, human uh, uh, causes yes, 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 yes. so if is there some way where we can uh, you know bring out more awareness something that we can think of as a group yeah. uh, i i'm my name is priya sa i am also on the whatsapp group uh, okay. of uh, the migration okay. i report from jainagar Sure. So, uh, so if there's something like that, uh, you know, we, that we can think of, even in the interviews that are given, or something where we are constantly bringing more awareness to this factor, yeah. we could save a lot of them who are uh, migrating with so much effort. They fly and they get stopped like this. Yes, a few quick things that come to my mind is that since we know about permanent uh, ways, their routes they migrate. we could actually put out sign boards like uh, so there are sign boards for elephant crossings you could yes, say butterfly right. crossings one thing second thing is uh, you should go for butterfly friendly urban gardening or as i said urban biodiversity preserves and butterfly gardens the third thing is as an individual uh, we can actually tell them that this is happening if we can take a photograph or a video and explain them this is what happening you need to have a butterfly exclusion uh, device in your uh, this, this this netting and the, uh, the fourth thing which we can do is since you are already on the group we can actually start a thread on facebook and uh, get all the ideas from the various people on the group and then maybe give a written representation uh, to the concerned authorities maybe the uh, the corporation or the sports council or whatever or whoever is managing this part so it should be uh, uh, we can uh, make that change there is no no question about that we can do that since there so and so many of us involved in this i think uh, like as a group each of us can pull in our ideas somewhere yes. and bring about a movement for it itself so that Definitely. you know it gets uh, taken uh, into action i would suggest you sh- start a thread on the migration india facebook group we can contribute and finally come out with a good proposal and then submit it okay so i'm on the whatsapp group i'm not on the facebook uh, uh, so maybe on the whatsapp i can yeah, start just, it and somebody who's on facebook can yeah, continue with yeah, it no, no problem just put that thread along we'll manage it okay thank you sir Okay, uh, Kalish says Sangeeta Jain wants uh, to know how do we come to know if it is a second generation migration during the migration if if, if we don't have data in the absence of data how do you know how many generations have been covered for the migration? Uh, so we have data from South India. Uh, we have confirmed data from South India. We have observ- observers observing this every day along the migration. It's just a month, right? So we observe it mm-hmm. continuously, and there is no migration uh, in the return part maybe four five months, and then when the uh, northeast monsoon comes, they return. so the generation that returns is not what the generation goes there it could be subsequent generations what i mean is not the second generation we can subsequent generations that come back i hope you get it so they don't breed on the way that is the basic idea it's not the same butterfly that is coming back this is one of the subsequent generations that breed and propagate that come back from the from the return migration clear right clear yeah so i think uh, we have finished almost all the all the questions in the both facebook as well as out here in zoom okay and uh, once again i would like to thank you for this dr kalesh and i would really like to see this a uh, movement of tracking migration and you know understanding migration uh this picking up and spreading yeah. all over india so there are a lot of questions that uh, that are right now just being asked can also be answered there are a lot of experts in this butterfly as well as other entomology field who can try and answer provided they have backup data which is missing as yeah. you rightly pointed out sir yes so, so what, social media yeah tell, what, social what media are, is the, 
Mm. What, we are, yeah, what, what we are doing here is uh, we have this chat backups and we are actually filling up Excel sheets and this data we generated in, from 2016 it will be published with multiple co-authors on a good scientific journey. So that will become the basis of this uh, entire exercise which we've been doing since the last five years. That's what we are doing. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, also we would be awaiting this app that you were talking about and yes. hope that it covers all of India yeah. so that the baseline data all over India can be taken up. As you are aware, there are people who are interested. However, the cohesive group that is formed in the southern part of India has come over about a period of time yeah. and effort. You are aware of that. Yes. So uh, that needs to be started. This whole thing needs to be started in an India-wise basis so that after a certain period of time, we start getting meaningful data that can lead into research as well as, you know, protective measures as rightly pointed out and all this yes. stuff about my supply migration. Yes. Keeping that in mind and uh, thanking you once again, sir, I would like to end this session right now. Yeah. And one more thing I would like to add is uh, today evening, there's a session on uh, Hesperi Day. People are interested, they can join it. Six or long, I guess. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, well, uh, thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> Thanks all.